Do you like women's sports, sports across the gender spectrum? How about you're sick of men's sports? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. On this show, we work to level the sports coverage across the gender spectrum. Welcome to Balance Sports. I'm Hunter. I'm Jules. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Balance Sports. I'm Hunter. I'm Jules. In a shocking twist, we are talking about WNBA. And Beyonce. This is the Beyonce episode. Let's get the <laughs> WA the world target. There were games, people won, blah, blah, blah. Beyonce's record is coming out tonight. Oh my God. Maybe not record, one song. Shall we start with scores from around the league? Let's go. Friday night, we had Connecticut Sun beating the Seattle Storm 82 to 71. Wings beat the Mercury 93 to 88. The Sky beat the Dream 106 to 100. And on Sunday, we had the Seattle Storm beating the New York Liberty 81 to 72. Washington Mystics beat the Connecticut Sun 71 to 63. The Indiana Fever beat the Chicago Sky 89 to 87. The Dallas Wings beat the Los Angeles Sparks 92 to 82. And the Las Vegas Aces beat the Lynx 96 to 95. I will say that most of the games followed suit, except some of the games yesterday, I was a little shocked by the results. I We picked really well this week. You went 10-3. and three. I was 9-4. and four. Um, Let's talk about the games we both missed. How about Connecticut lost to Washington? Sorry, yeah, Connecticut kind of got beat pretty handily by Washington. I think that was a game, uh, the difference was like 20. That um, Yeah, I think that was a surprise. I think Mystics are good. Now, you have said the Mystics are built for a championship. You said that early, early on. Um, obviously, this isn't the championship, but I I think we picked Connecticut. Like that uh, was a bit of a shocker. Yeah, I looked at the stats on it. Um, didn't get to watch that game. I looked at the stats and it looked like uh, Connecticut just put up like a dud game. Honestly, you know, like mm-hmm. you just have a game and everyone's shooting percentages looked off. Um, I don't know. And I saw that Alyssa Thomas got a technical from the bench in that game in the second quarter. So that tells me that there was other things happening in that game. They just weren't feeling it. They mm-hmm. said, Washington, we've been on a roll. Y'all take one. We're top two in the league. Y'all like, what, four or five? You catch on up. Perhaps they were a little too focused on beating um, the Storm earlier. That's what it was. They were so focused on us. They didn't even do the scout for Atlanta Deladon and the rest of the squad. And then the other major upset to me was Indianapolis beating Chicago. I would agree. Yeah. That's extremely surprising. Melissa Smith. <laughs> did, you, did you get to watch the game or some highlights? I saw some highlights. Nice. Share with us your tweet. My tweet. The tweet you saw. WBA Twitter. We love y'all. We do. I choose not to. Uh, I choose not to converse with y'all because y'all are messy and for real. He I'm, said it on me. We'll drag folks, so that's why we come about here and talk about because it it's our show, and you can't come to my house and drag me. <laughs> you probably could, but um, WNBA Twitter stands up for a lot of the right things. I feel like the WNBA is one of the best Twitters about that. Mm-hmm. So people are big mad that Sue played her last. Regular season home game in New York. Got a big old ovation from them. They did a lot of things to celebrate her. She just announced, obviously, we talked about her retirement. Right. Blah, blah, blah. New York wore shirts. They gave her a, the uh, you know, the, the send-off video tech deal. Yeah. Gift, all these things. Um, so people were just comparing it to, and apparently, um, I haven't seen the commercials or the video, but I guess League Pass or some of the WMEA things already have these kind of segments or tributes to Sue. Um, and she just announced it this week. So people are kind of already like, Sue seems just, like y'all were ready. <laughs> Sue just did this and you already have all these things prepared. Sylvia announced it before the season. She is on arguably one of the greatest of all time. Why aren't y'all doing it on the same level? And Twitter had some stuff to say about it. The white woman of it all, like when the league was built on, I'm serious, yes. like when it was like built by black women, um, just like why is she getting all this hot? I've seen a lot of people be like, if we're really talking greatest all time, like, yes, she is the leader in assists, but was she ever the best player on her team? I saw a lot of people saying mm. that. They were like, even in the years between Lauren Jackson and Brianna Stewart, she wasn't that girl. Swin Cash was that girl. Other people were that girl. Um so this is my take. I would love it if we could point these things out without knocking Sue. Like it's not Sue's fault that she's getting celebrated more. That feels like New York 
It's their fault. It feels like ESPN's fault. Like, Sue, I don't think Sue's calling me like, yep, run that tape of me one more time. Yeah. And I think they're just like different people. I understand like the message behind it, but I also think Sue is a lot more in the media. Yes. And yeah. and all these things like factor into one another. She's in the media a lot more because she's been marketed a lot more because X, Y, Z. So every one of these things I think have a domino effect. Um, man, we, we've talked about it on here, like picking battles. I'm not saying don't fight to hear more about Sylvia Fowles, but like, Leave the players at like get mad at the league. Get, get mad, mad at the, the W. Yes, I think the I think the the vitriol and the the anger should be directed at the WNBA. End of sentence. No one else. You shouldn't be coming for Seattle. You shouldn't be coming for Sue. Um, Sue should be celebrated. Sylvia should be celebrated. Like you should just be adding to, not taking away from anybody. I keep also thinking. Um... You know who New York didn't do a video for is Brian January, who's retiring and on that team. Like, she knows she's not a great, but everyone's just like, it needs to be equal. And I'm like, it's not equal to the same players on the same team. Like, everyone's careers are different. Everyone's personalities are different. I really... The comparisons of both of them being these great players, like, I, I don't know what stats Sylvia leads all time because no one's posting about it as much. No. I know that Sue leads, like, the all-time assist category. Right. Uh, unequivocally sylvia is a great it's just like does it need does it have to be even is it supposed to be i'm trying to think of like on a men's side right now if sure. lebron retired and I don't anyone know, else anyone retired, else like seriously. it's gonna be so much bigger if it's lebron yeah like it, he would he would shadow anyone else so i'm like no one should retire the year lebron retires because you're gonna feel like well poop like and i'm kind of like the only people in my mind personality wise like name wise that i honestly feel like would eclipse sue in that would be candace and diana exactly yeah Exactly. I'm not saying there needs to be a hierarchy. Like, we have to celebrate Sue this amount and then this person, but... um, As far as, like, here's why I think Sue is getting more recognition. She has been a face of the league. Sylvia has not. Like, and, and a very casual fan of the WNBA will know who Sue is. They may not know who Sylvia is, and I think that's why she's getting so much more attention and trending and uh, NBA players are saying stuff and, like... Yeah, she's she's just been the face, and Sylvia hasn't. Yeah, can we go over talk some stats real fast? Let's talk some stats. Top five leaders in points: Brianna Stewart, number one, twenty one point eight points per game. We have Kelsey Plum, Arike, Kelsey Mitchell, and Asia Wilson. Shocked by any of those? You're going, and I heard Asia last. And I was like, <laughs> Kelsey, okay, yeah. She's eighteen point eight points per game. She's on my fantasy team, so snaps Kelsey. <laughs> That's a great one. Uh, rebounds per game, Big Sill leading the way. She's the only player in the league averaging double digit rebounds. Wow! In her final year, come on, Sylvia Fowles, number one in rebounds. We celebrate her on this show. Here we go. Won't say her name again. Asia Wilson, number two. John Quill Jones, and number three, Dierica Hamby. Melissa Smith, at number five, the rookie. Nice. First rookie to appear on your list so far. Right? Assist per game. Now we got Natasha Cloud and Courtney Vandersloot both tied at seven per game. Sue Bird at number three, 6.2. Sabrina Ionescu, because that's how they've been saying it on TV lately. Let's try this. Hold on. Sabrina at 6.1 and Chelsea Gray at 5.9. Number one in the league at three point percentage. Coming in at number one. A Minnesota Lynx player for starters, already shock boots. Mariah Jefferson. Damn. 48%. Number two, Destiny Henderson. Come on, Rook. Destiny Henderson shooting 47% from three. Hey. Then we got Epiphany Prince at 46%. No T, no shade to the other three, but these next two I feel like would have to shoot more volume. So it's pretty startling to me that their percentages are so, so high. NECA. Is a number four and three point percentage shooting fifty uh, shooting forty five point eight percent from threes. Wow, is that not crazy? Neca is so good, and then Alicia Gray is a number five at forty three point nine from three. She's also on my fantasy team, having a great year. You want to know who makes the most points in, in fantasy points? Brianna Stewart averages forty fantasy points a game. Is she on any of your teams? She unfortunately is not. God, that would be a great get. Right behind her, Asia Wilson, 37. That's who I thought it was going to be. Right. She gets a lot. Kelsey Plum, 34. Sabrina Yo Nescu, 34. And Scala Diggin Smith, also at 34. Look at that. Uh-huh. But your fantasy teams. 
pick them up. Fantasies. Never drop. Fantasy is fun. Agree. (laughs) Fantasy is fun. I'm having lots of fun. Um, Being a little general manager um, helps me pay attention to the other games going on. (laughs) And uh, I think also just like makes me care more about other players because sometimes it's like you you have the stars of the league that are kind of. I won't say pushed in. Yes, I will. They're pushing your face a little bit more. A Sue Bird, if you will. No, I mean, it's big facts. <laughs> Having a fantasy team, you know, people get injured. You you got to pick up somebody else and root for their success because it's my success. <laughs> so really, it's about me. <laughs> no, I totally agree with that, Cinnamon. Watching, uh, I'll watch more games that I wouldn't watch because I have fantasy players on it or I find myself um, rooting for really specific things within games. I'll be like, I need this team to win, but as long as Tina Charles goes off, I'm cool with it. You know what I mean? It or just like pick up a couple more rebounds. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> I'm like, damn, she missed that shot, but someone on my fantasy team got that rebound. Let's go. Yeah, that's a great, great point. <laughs> no I'm blocks, no love any, for Ezzy. The blocks, I mean, we can go over blocks really fast. In blocks per game, we have Ezzy, Magbagor, leading the league at 2.7, Asia Wilson in second, Liz Cambage, Queen Egbo, and Emily Inksler. Come on, Rooks. I'm kind of impressed with this Indianapolis team. They've got a lot of really good individual statistics now. If they could just put them together to win some games. What I really love is how that started so early. You know, I had to flip it and reverse it, honey. <laughs> you thought it was going to be a compliment? Come with a twist. And I mean, look, they beat Chicago yesterday. I still really like this Indiana team. I feel like when they lose games, it's not for lack of effort. Ooh. I'm, that's that's not shade. Okay, it felt like it was. It's no, not, no, no. I'm are, just saying. Like, I think they're gonna they're getting there. So hard. <laughs> they are. We said this at the beginning of the season. It's going to be a process, and yes. I have faith in the yes. process. They're all super duper young. I, it is really impressive to me that even though they're so young and maybe they're not winning the games at the very end, I think they've been in them, and then individually they're doing what they need, and that will only help feed the team. I like where we're going, Indianapolis. Storm news. Storm news. What's happening this week in stews? So the storm finished their big road trip, uh, four and one. Huge. 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 Were you surprised by the one loss? Or the no, or any Connecticut of the felt right. Um, Connecticut felt the right to lose. I think Dallas is a different team with Mabry in, and she wasn't there. I'm not saying we would have lost that game, but I think, you know, sometimes we played a lot of games with players absent. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes you just got to have the luck in your favor. I think it helped us to play Dallas without Mabry. But I think we're trending up. Four and one's a great record to have there. I've been really intrigued with what they've been doing, what they've been doing with Gabby Williams mm-hmm. and kind of some of the rotations they went on. She mentioned that she had gone to breakfast with Sue Bird the day prior and that they had talked about different things they could do to get more comfortable what gabby's strengths are sue was very complimentary you know just saying you have a completely unique set of strengths yes sue sue was very complimentary and she, uh, sue also shared that in her press conference that she went out on the same breakfast and da, da, da. and i was like oh this is so great why is this happening a third of the way through the season i understand that they didn't have training camp together but it's been a few months now may has gone by um we're now coming to the end of june and this is the first breakfast that y'all have had together where you're like hey girl what do you like to do on the court that seemed kind of odd and a little late to the game Mm. is it just me i have a i have a take i have an i have an idea well for starters i like i imagine that it's not the first it's the first break. It's just the two of them. Sure. Mm-hmm. So they've been together at different things. Mm-hmm. Why do you think this happened? Why do you think they just now did it? Because I think this is the first time Gabby was put in that position to have the ball in her hands a little bit more. And so now this sounds so harsh. I'm like, so now Sue cares. And it's like, thank you. You know, Hey, how can, how can we work together better? Because you're now feeding me the ball. You know what I mean? So that's kind of where that, I felt like that came from. What were your thoughts? What's your theory? My theory is is exactly that. I think that they were like, something's not happening, so we're going to do this a little bit of a change. And Sue was like, um, here, here's my take. I, I think that they thought, they've said this, that they were just going to be like crushing this season. I think that they have championship aspirations. I think it, and so the beginning of the year has been wonky because of everyone's absences, injuries, COVID, blah, blah, blah. We've discussed that. I don't feel like this breakfast happens unless 
you're like in the place where they were, which was like around 500, not necessarily winning the game sometimes that they want to be winning. And yes, they just went four and one. And she talked about having this breakfast, what, the day before New York, they were already. Yeah, so they were three and one at that point. So, I mean, that that is great. I think this is just like a, this is a breakfast that was not going to happen unless things were not going the way you anticipated. Correct. There was a problem. There this, was a problem. This and that, was them that's trying to solve the bad. problem. It's not, it's not bad. Exactly. They're trying to solve the problem. Um, it just feels like, I don't the know. The problem's it, been there. The problem's been the there. Problem's, the problem's coming from inside the house. <laughs> I feel uh, like you couldn't have seen that sooner. And it was also just, like, I mean, and, well, you know, we have more games to see if this rotation works. But it's like, it seems odd. The team's so small. And it just seems, it's only 11 people. And it just seems like a, a regular, like, hey, you're new to the team, Gabby. Um, I am the veteran face of this league the vet the veteran on this team welcome let's have breakfast at some point in april so that i know what you do well on the court i I, I get it and you i know don't what I'm, I'm like you know what i i know she's doing that in her in basket like her job is a basketball player yes. so it is asking to me that's like how often have I invited colleagues out to a, a have a drink or talk about something outside of my work hours? I'm very protective of that space, and we know Sue is busy as a biscuit. So it makes sense that it happened on a road trip, perhaps, because they have a lot of this time. Busy as a biscuit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. No, no, no. Ooh. Because basketball is your job, and this conversation affects your job. So it is your job to get to know the skill points of your teammates. And this is someone who's new who came in. I just don't get it. Slash anybody else. Like, um, Brianna Stewart. Like, yeah, let, let's have breakfast. You're, you're new to the team. This you think is my she's had team. a one-on-one breakfast with every player? Should every player have one-on-one breakfast and one-on-one meals with every player on the team? Honestly, yes. There's only 11 of them. Did That's you a- do that? Yes. And really? I think, yes. And I that's could stand some of the people I played with. Totally. But that's not the point. The point is that we are here working together. And th- and I think that's why my mind is a little bit blown is because, yeah, we did. Like, we were we were basically assigned, like, hey, talk to, the, you know, you speak with this freshman, da 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 Like, we, we did team dinners in small in small groups with freshmen. So it was one-on-three, one-on-two. Um, and you did make a concerted effort to get to know them. And that's at a college level. So I think... One meal with, there's not, they didn't have a ton of new people who came in this year. So it was kind of surprising to me to see that like, and this was a, a productive conversation that helped. I don't know. It just seemed Maybe they've late. had meals before, but we're just hearing about this one because I'm it sure. was very pivotal eye-opening. for sure. I'm now, what you, sure that's the case. It, it has to be. I, I'm, I'm not even being sarcastic. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I totally agree. Yeah. What do you think of Gabby um, running that? I mean, she had 23 points yesterday. What do you think of her bringing the ball up and kind of facilitating more of the offense, moving Sue over to a shooting guard? I think it worked. I mean, they they played really well, and um, I think it gives a different look. Um, I I don't think that they want to be so predictable of, like, this is what happens all the time. So I think it's great for just throwing off scouting or giving teams other things to deal with so that they're like, oh, okay, like, Gabby's going to be bringing it up, da-da-da-da, and then, oh, we don't show that this time. So I think it's really, really good. I think it's incredibly helpful for them. Uh, Noel kind of touched on I think the part that helps them the most is they were one of if not the last team in uh two point field goal percentage. They were really or two pointers made, they get the most percentage of their points from three in the league. The last I was looking at that statistic. In fact I can pull it up right now. Hey nerd. Most percentage of two points. Most percentage of three. They get thirty five percent, almost thirty six percent of their points from three. So I think it, it really highlights both players' current strengths. Sue is no longer that player, that point guard that's blowing past you. She's really great. Like I love her in an open court because she finds the players as they're streaking down. But I think when you come down and the defense is set up, she's not blowing past your defender, right? So you're not getting as much of these like open kickout shots for your three-point shooters. I really like Gabby Williams for this now because she is a lot more agile and fast. She'll drive past you. And then I think that at this point in Sue's career... She, I'm not saying she is just a spot up three point shooter, but I really like other players driving and having Sue 
kind of out there on that three to hit down that shot. I feel like she's been a little bit more consistent in these last couple games. I would agree. And then if Gabby is more uncomfortable or trying to get her shot going for the season, it only helps you to see easy buckets go in, to see you cutting to the basket, getting some more free throw attempts. I just feel like it's going to really elevate, hopefully, their points per game, but just getting in more of a flow, like seeing some easy buckets go in in order to make these harder ones hopefully fall later. Yeah. The previous seven games, she was 0 for 13 for three points. So them mixing up things was was a much better decision, for sure. Jewel Lloyd had a, a tough weekend, I felt like. Um, the New York game and the Connecticut game, she struggled. Yeah, I... I Which between, is uncharacteristic. It is. In between uh, Stewie's good game, a couple of good games, uh, Gabby Williams and then Sue, I feel like Jewel was... I'm not going to say just like lost in this week. Oh, but I like, was. I was going to say lost. Well, well yeah. I, I guess that's right. Like, I, you know, her games weren't necessarily like stand out, and that's fine. Like a couple. That's why you have teammates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I just thought it was there was a it was a busy week in Seattle. Super duper busy. I liked what uh, Gabby Williams had to say about her friendship and relationship with Marianne Johannes um, on the French national team. And she shared, I haven't actually gone out of respect for Gabby to see the clip of her getting crossed. She did ask us not to go Google it. <laughs> and I do support that. I'm sure we'll see it at some point. Yeah, right. Right here. <laughs> okay, so let's get in. Our pickums. I, I've updated our records, and it's very close. Currently, you are twenty wins and eleven losses, and I'm twenty one wins and ten losses. That's pretty good. That's really good. I think we're crushing this. Um, all right. Let's start with tomorrow's games: Dallas Wings versus the Atlanta Dream. That's a toughie. It is. It's happening in Atlanta. I have mine. I'm ready when you are, and we'll count to three. Dallas and Atlanta. One, two, three. Wings. wings. Mm. Oh, God, I want some wings right now. Chicago Sky versus Las Vegas Aces. One, two, three. Aces. Aces. They're so good. They are. I feel like I have not. I, who will I pick against? I'm not rooting against them. You tell me Asia, Kelsey, and Jack, you're all out with food poisoning. I still may pick them. Minnesota Lynx versus Phoenix Mercury. One, two, three. Mercury. Mercury. Wow. Washington Mystics, Los Angeles Sparks. One, two, three, Sparks. It's in LA. I feel like they need a win. I I agree. It was supposed to happen last week. (laughs) New York Liberty, Connecticut Sun. This game is going to be happening on Wednesday. It is in Uncasville. One, two, three, Sun. Sun. Indiana Fever, Dallas Wings. 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 Phoenix Mercury, Minnesota Lynx. Mercury. Washington Mystics, Seattle Storm. We're going to be at this one. I'm so excited. We mm-hmm. haven't seen Mystics play yet. Storm. Storm. <sighs> okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago Sky and Los Angeles Sparks. Sky. Sky. There is one game on Friday, New York Liberty and Atlanta Dream. This game will be played in Atlanta. One, two, three. Liberty. Liberty. <gasps> yeah. Really? I'm surprised by you, too. I. <laughs> Phoenix Mercury, Dallas Wings. 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 Although I feel like Skylar Diggins Smith is, this is kind of like a revenge game for her. And I feel like it'll be a good game. Mm. Be She'll good be game. calling for so many fouls. Riffs, beware of that <laughs> one. Liz Angeles Sparks versus Seattle Storm. One, two, three. Storm. Storm. Washington Mystics versus the Aces. 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 Do we really think they can't lose? They have lost. No, before. I almost picked the Mystics in this one. I'm like, we were like, they're never going to lose. Next, we got Connecticut Sun and the Atlanta Dream. Sun. And then we have Minnesota Lynx versus the Chicago Sky. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Those are all of our pickums. We'll update our standings. There's a lot of games we're going to be doing. We have found out that Chicago Sky and uh, Las Vegas Aces are going to be the two teams represented in the Commissioner's Cup. Connecticut's 4-3 and three in Commissioner's Cup game. Chicago's 8-1. and one, So there's no chance they can be caught. Las Vegas is 8-0. In Commissioner's Cup game. No chance that they can be caught. So that'll be really fun to watch. Um, uh, Also, just for gits and shiggles, um, yesterday had to laugh at the Jessica Shepard of it all. This would be in our Shacked in a Fool. Oh, my gosh. We need a segment. Oh, yeah. They are down three. They run a great inbounds play that sees Jessica Shepard drive for a fadeaway shot in the paint. And the way the game works is that was worth two points. And my favorite part of it is 
you can't see her celebration from the clip that we were watching. But um, the Las Vegas Aces players just like grab the ball and they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love that reaction. They're like, great cool. shot. <laughs> good, good shot, girl. You did that. Towards the end of the game, you typically, you typically have, have timeouts some timeouts and decisions to be made. So it probably was a broken play. And then at some point during that brokenness, she forgot that they were she down decided, by three. She decided, I'll fix it. <laughs> I'll fix it with this two points. Clutch. <laughs> Good for her to go to the media afterwards and be like, royally, that one's on me, guys. <laughs> that, you know what? I, I made that basket. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have heard nothing else from me. I would have been in that press conference like, I. you can't tell me I didn't hit the game winner. I sent that game to overtime in we my can mind. because you didn't. <laughs> in my mind, we're going to overtime. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fight me. Best Beyonce karaoke song. Beyonce or Destiny's Child? Well, which one are we going with? That's Let's what... go with best, best karaoke song that Beyonce is in. Beyonce has to touch the song, but has to grace it. That's literally the qualifier. Best Beyonce karaoke song. Because Telephone by Lady Gaga slaps. I have my selection. And while you're all waiting and thinking about yours at home, we would love to direct you to a music video that we filmed known as 7-Eleven right here. Like, subscribe, um, see what we all looked like when we were much younger. Ooh, what a Enjoy. <laughs> Wigs for days. My selection for best Beyonce karaoke song. Is love on top? Yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing. Okay, I'm going with a throwback. I really like love on top, it, and also that's one I've seen. I've been in karaoke places, and because it builds, mm-hmm. they, oh, people be getting oh, jazz yeah. that song. I've gotten out of my chair to dance. <laughs> um, I'm going with throwback. Say my name, Destiny's Child. Oh, I yeah, yeah. notoriously. We'll bust this out after a couple beverages uh, and do karaoke and live my absolute life. <laughs> I did love that album. This is the I'm portion the where one. we just list Beyonce songs. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> for Beyonce sports. <laughs> All right, for balanced sports, I'm Hunter. And I'm Jules.